right. Um, I'm Deb Amstrom. I'm the director of the library, and we're so pleased to have Steve Schumacher here um, to uh, talk about his art. He was here a couple of years ago with another I don't, with another theme, and it was very well received. And, um, and we're happy that uh, he's going to explain all this quantum physics stuff that we're that we're kind of not so, we don't all know about this stuff. But um, but I will just turn it right over to Steve. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. <laughs> so most of you know me quite well, and um, I'll explain just a tad for for those who don't. Um, I am, first of all, not a scientist, and so um, this is not a scientist's perspective on quantum biology. Quantum biology, of course, is a part of quantum physics, but it's a relatively new part of that science. Really only in the ten, last 10 or 15 years has a lot of the experimental evidence been found. So the focus is on quantum biology, and that is living things. Biology, of course, is the study of living things, and that's what quantum biology focuses on. Images that have to do with quantum biology um, is a little challenging. Science, particularly new science, particularly complicated science, um, is, does not lend itself to pictures of the sky or trees or people. Even. So it was really about trying to create images that had relationships between them. So the first painting that I want to um, Pass around. If I can get this to work. Why would it be? Now, there's plenty of glare on this, and you may or may not see it well, but it is a painting that um, is in the um, Deb. What, what do you call the room with the fireplace? Oh, it's not really a fireplace, it's actually just a mantle. But um, that's the main, that was, that was the main room at one point before we put on the addition. So I would, maybe it's the parlor. But the main room yes. is where um, the paintings on quantum biology all are. There are another set of paintings in Deb's office, I'll call it your office. That's the that are, are not related to, to quantum biology. So this painting, um, if you can see it, is a relationship between a book from the early 20th century called The Jungle by Upton Sinclair, which was about meatpacking in Chicago at the turn of the 20th century. And of course, conditions were incredibly harsh and difficult and dangerous. And the people of the United States, of course, would eat a lot of the food, particularly the beef that came out of Chicago. So this first painting is really about what we ingest. Not only food, but medicine, pollution, all kinds of supplements, the air, the water, whatever we ingest. Because I want to tell a little story about a um, 10 year old girl who was diagnosed with a fever um, and with aches and achy, achy joints. Um, and the doctor came and said, You have rheumatic fever, and prescribed penicillin for the rest of her life. Now this was, of course, some time ago. Um, somehow, well, tough to see, I'm sorry. Um, and the reason I bring this up is quantum biology has found that it is the subatomic transfer of electrons, subatomic particles, all of things known for science, 
that is what happens when enzymes work in our body and when enzymes work in all animals. And if you take antibiotics for a long period of time, your mitochondria, which are in virtually every cell in your body, in our body, in every animal's body, are impaired or damaged. And so when she was diagnosed with rheumatic fever and told to take penicillin for all of her life, it set up a condition that so many people in the United States had. Rough, it's estimated that 130 million people in the United States have chronic health conditions. And it is because of things like pollution and overuse of antibiotics and uh, also absolutely trauma plays a big role. Um, so you have a lot of folks who have impairments who are trying to stay healthy. And so finally, um, after 15 years, when Jenny and I got together, she decided she wouldn't take penicillin any longer. So um, that first painting is really about what we ingest, that we all are in one way or another um, taking part in this process of struggling with you know, how we stay healthy. And the, um, the British, who have done actually a lot of work on quantum biology, um, did a study and they found that over 40% of the antibiotics prescribed in the U.S. now are what they call inappropriate. That they should only be reserved for severe infections. But they're used, of course, almost like a placebo. It's like if you have a fever, you, you might have this, you might have that. Well, take some my own. So, um, for me, this is one of the reasons why quantum biology is much more impactful even than quantum physics. Because quantum physics, you have amazingly speculative theory about what actually is you know, the origins of the universe, what, is, what could be beyond the universe, multiple dimensions. I mean, they are really very speculative theories. But quantum biology has found the links between what we ingest and what happens to our enzymes, you know, our ability not only Go back to mitochondria for a minute. Mitochondria um, produce ATP, which is an enzyme, which is responsible for a huge amount of our energy and our growth, our cell growth. Without mitochondria being healthy, our cell growth starts to die. It is also the site, mitochondria also the site where our innate immunity so if you compromise immunity, you also become prone to all kinds of things. So, um, for me, this is why the implications of quantum biology are so profound, because it is about us, what we ingest, and what animals ingest, because many, many animals, of course, are fed antibiotics. Now, probably not as widespread as it used to be, but beef especially, um, has been a, you know, a historic problem with our food supply. And if anybody knows, I'd love to know how much, anybody know how much antibiotics are fed to animals these days, so I know, I don't know. So, the other issue about this science um, is that people start, and this is uh, another thing in the series. When new science is found, we start to question how we see reality. I've actually had two people, a relative and a friend, who related that I was talking about religious 
issues connected to quantum biology. This woman who has a PhD in education said she could not she could not entertain what I was talking about, quantum biology, because it went against her religious beliefs. I was, I was just astounded, but if you look at the literature, you find that there are people in the United States who do not want to understand or learn quantum science because it in some way violates their religious beliefs. And I think that what we're seeing in the United States, Barbara, is a, an urge to you know, go back to earlier times. And to try and preserve an old, an old worldview, because quantum biology and quantum physics, I think, is, really creates a different worldview, a different way of looking at reality. And the, the old way of looking at reality is based on Newtonian physics, on mechanics, on the universe as a machine, and our bodies as a machine. And if some part of our bodies breaks down, you just replace that part, right? Well, it's good in theory, but it's not how we are as, as beings. We are very in interdependent. Our systems are all connected. And so the health of one part is important to the health of the whole being. So a lot of people are not really happy about discarding this worldview, this mechanistic worldview. And so you see things like, you know, people who don't want to give up their extremely loud and polluting vehicle. But a lot of people feel very attached to those cars and trucks and all those things. So this painting is just um, about um, force field. Because to me, the metaphor that makes sense is that we are within and amidst and part of force field, gravity, magnetism. Each of us has a magnetic field in our brain. Quantum biology has established it that there are many animals that use the magnetic field um, of the Earth to migrate. So, um, for me, quantum biology also is very disruptive. It makes us question a lot of things. And for many people in the United States right now, they do not want to question a lot of things <laughs> because it's challenging. It's difficult. You know, you have to reassess, reevaluate, rethink a lot of things. So, the, and I'm, I have to apologize for, um, it's hard to see this, but we'll go to the next one here. So, for me, the metaphor. that we're part of interpenetrating um, and interconnected force fields. And so nature, um, which is all tied up with this, which is bio biology on a vast scale, um, to me is, is under such stress that all kinds of different systems you know, are breaking down, having difficulty, producing un, unanticipated consequences. Um, so the, there's a painting that's over the mantle. Um, the title is Nature is Quantum. So it's interdependent, interpenetrating. Um, so the last, the last painting I want to just mention Of course, they're all in there, and you can look at them as long as you want. Um, is a well, let me let me go back with just a minute. Um, 
I think that the the metaphor of the machine is such that that we learn that human beings should dominate nature, that we should extract minerals, and that we should exploit nature. And I know it is like um, and I think what we need is a change to, to becoming partners with nature. That unless we do that, that nature will come back and uh, harm us in a big way. Um, and I think we've gone a long ways down the path of um, nature being, you know, out, really out of control. And so it, it, I think it is really vital that we learn how to be partners with nature. And that's really part of what that um, nature is quantum being is about. And then the final, the final one that I want to mention is um, a painting called Nurture the Probability. Um, and it is, it is a mix of watercolor and ink. Um, because it shows just a lot of ways that people can nurture a possible probability, um, but all within the fact that we are, we are animals, we're part of nature, we're part of the environment, and there's no escaping that. I don't care if you go to Mars and you have a billion dollars, but you can't escape it. So, uh, then I'll just pass around that last picture. If there are any... Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Sorry. Good. Are there any questions? it makes a lot of difference. Yeah, we are all part of, you know, nature, yeah. and there's no avoiding that. You know, I don't care how far you try to escape, there's no avoiding that. what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Um, and when I started this series, I went, like, how can I make sense of this? And I would read this stuff, and, you know, there was math that I didn't understand, you know, and really complicated biochemistry that was very difficult. But for me, what was important are what are the, what are the implications if the, the, the very smallest parts of matter and energy what makes up my being and that if I want to be healthy, then I have to take the whole into consideration. Yeah. That made sense to me. Now, all the math, you know, I leave that to my wife, who's much more of a scientist than I am. <laughs> you know, um, and the bio, particularly the biochemistry. Um, but you're right. Many, many people, it is very difficult to abandon a worldview that we've grown up with, that we're comfortable with, that we understand. But all of these, all of the science is coming very, very fast. 
University of Chicago just got $25 million last year to study quantum biology. So. interesting that Europe, I think, is much further along in terms of education around quantum science than we are in the United States. If you read the business literature in the United States, you will see articles about quantum science. But what they're really excited about is ways to make money with quantum science. Not necessarily how this is going to benefit you know, the whole society. Quantum computing is the most exciting rage going on right now because it would make encryption much better for security and it would make computing much, much faster. And if they can perfect that, they some companies expect to make a huge amount of money. But that's really only one side of quantum science. And so that's partly why I focus on quantum biology because it is about you know animals and people in the because it's not just our health, it's also our food and our agriculture um, that has to be taken into account. Because the U.S. is, like the jungle, is notorious for adding stuff to our food and it's not very good for us. I'm going to explain it. Basically, it's the qubit, or it's a, a, a quantum signal that is so fast and so rapid that it's much, much faster than off-on digital, you know, a computer, all computers based on off-on. The binary code. The binary, the binary code. code but, but then if you add machine learning uh, and quantum computing, it, it takes a whole exponential leap forward. They've only been able to sustain quantum computing for like a half a second at a time <laughs> so far. But it, it will probably come. Thank you all for checking this out. Appreciate Thank you. It. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, please uh, feel free to check out the show inside and I'm going to stay outside and stay nice but I'll be around. <laughs>